Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in today. Before you leave, if you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you can get new content. Enjoy the video. Hi everybody, this is Judy from Judy M Art Studio and today I am going to be doing a demo on how to do trees, winter trees, three different ways. Right now, um, it's winter in Maine. It's cold, it's snowy, it's blustery. And if you look at the trees, they're actually very beautiful this time of year. They are all um, either jagged and they've got snow stuck in the crevices or our pine trees, our spruce trees have got snow that are giving them a really cool effect as they come down. So um, I'm going to show you how to do hardwood trees like a maple that doesn't have leaves on it but that does have snow on it, pine trees or fir trees, and birch trees and we're going to do a little bit of a winter scene. So today I'm going to be using um, Indigo, which is Tim Ranger's ink, a little bit of sailboat blue for the sky, pitch black to fill in some of the birch, slate gray also to fill in some of the birch, and some snow cap white. So we're going to start by putting our background down first we want to make a really pretty night type of background, so I'm going to be using indigo, which is an absolutely amazing color. I'm going to lay down a little bit of just plain isopropyl alcohol. I've got 91% in that bottle. And it doesn't take much of this indigo, so I'm going to put a little bit of it down. Maybe three drops to move it around. And I'm going to put a little bit of sailboat blue just to give us some variations in color. We're going to try to keep it as much on the top as we want because down at the bottom is going to be our snow. So we're just going to move it around. The indigo blue is gorgeous because purples and pinks start to come out. A little bit of green starts to come out of the sailboat blue. Giving us an awesome night sky. I'm going to use these Pentel Aqua Washes. They are made for um, watercolors, but they work wonderful with alcohol inks. I've got a thick tooth and a fine tooth comb. I'm going to use the thick tooth one and just spread the ink around. Pull it down. Alcohol ink likes to go where ink is, uh, where alcohol is present. So if I stop like that, you can see it's sort of making a ridge line. I don't want that. I want to sort of combine it. All right, and I'm going to hit this with a little bit of air just to dry it out a little. I want to put a little bit of a variation in the sky, so I'm going to grab a little bit of raspberry. And I'm just going to put a drop down in the center and kind of spread it out with my alcohol pen. There we go. I want some texture in the sky, like there are some high cirrus clouds coming in. Some people like those nice flat skies, but I always like to have just some color variations in them. It makes them look a little bit more non-realistic, almost fantasy, but I kind of like that. I like creating unique things in my little world. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to do a little lifting of the ink that's down there. And I'm going to put in a really sort of gentle snowbank here that comes down. I'm going to pull the ink down because in snow there's a little bit of a bluish hue to it. Pull this side. It's a 
little natural line that goes down like that. And then put a little bit more alcohol on this. And I'm going to use a Q-tip to blend and soften some, soften some of those lines. Alright, now I'm going to figure out where my trees are. I want to have two little pine trees together. I'm thinking they might be pretty right here. I'm going to do a birch tree probably over here and then maybe a big black um, hardwood tree right in the center. So I think I'm going to start with my birch tree. My birch tree is going to come up and go like it's going to be the one closest to us. It's going to come up and it's sort of going to go out of our picture just like that. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to use 90% and I'm just going to again lift the ink like I just did. It's going to go all the way up off the top. Now birch trees are pretty straight. This one's going to have a little bit of a curve in it. All right, so this, as you can see, has got a little bit of a purplish hue to it, and that is fine. Um, not a problem at all, because that purple is going to sort of blend into the background. So with birch trees, one thing that they usually have are these little scraggly arms that come out. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to, again, lift the ink. I'm going to use these little mini micro tools. I get these on Amazon. And I'm just going to lift the ink off of where I want the branches to be. I'm going to take a lot of the alcohol out. I just want a tiny little bit. Because I don't want the branches to be very big at all. Okay, and I'm going to use Snowcap White to fill in the rest of the little squiggly, squiggly, squiggly branches on that one. Do another one up here. I kind of like that. All right, I think I'm going to do my black tree, my hardwood tree, right here. And it's going to start about here. And it's going to be a little bit smaller in diameter than the birch tree because it's a little bit further away. So I'm going to put a little bit of black on my palette. And I'm going to take a pretty small brush. This is a 3-0 to start this. I'm going to have this one start right about here and work up this way. Now these trees usually have a little bit more of a base. They come sort of down and out whereas birch trees are pretty much straight. So we're going to put a little bit more of a base here. All right, so now I want all kinds of other branches to sort of come off this one. If you remember, branches usually start thicker towards the base of the tree, and then they thin out as they go. So you always want to make your branches a little bit thicker, and then let them thin out naturally. All right, now I'm going to use a tiny little thin brush. This is a 5-0. I'm going to make some scraggly little branches coming off of this hardwood tree. These are kind of fun to do because you can start wherever you want. You're going to put just little tiny branches 
And then at the end of them, you're just gonna do some little squiggly, tiny branches coming off in any direction you want. Key to doing these is to have a really light, light touch. Almost like a feather. Alright, that looks pretty good. Doesn't have a lot of dimension yet, but we are going to add that in. I'm looking right now, I don't like how flat this is, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just sort of another straggly branch coming out this way. Maybe thicken this up a little so it looks like this branch comes a little further out. Same thing here, I'm going to go down with this one. So like, look at your tree. Your tree should, most trees are pretty well rounded. So if yours like has a flat edge or whatever, that probably wouldn't happen in nature. So try to round things out and make them look as natural as possible. Let's see, and then I'm gonna have this one sort of go up here like you can't see the top of the tree. So your eye is gonna take you up that way. So it does look like you have a nice rounded shape. All right, so before we get into shading, I'm gonna um, put in a couple of little pine trees. I think I might do them sort of down here in this corner. Be tiny little ones. We're gonna start out by going back to a little bit of a bigger brush. Um, this is a 3-0. I am gonna add a touch of green. I'm gonna take a Bria Reese. I like this Bria Reese green. Uh, it's cobalt green. At night you wouldn't see necessarily the green um, of a tree, but this is my world so I want it to have a tiny little bit of green in it just for a little bit more color other than black, white, and purple. So put a little bit of black and a little bit of cobalt green. and. The way I always start these is I get this right straight up and down. I'm going to have these down over here in the corner. I may only go with one. But I want to make sure that my center line of the tree, which you're not going to see though, is straight. Okay. And then my first couple of lines going up for the tree equate to that straight line. And then I can turn it so I can paint easier. I'm just going to sort of pull down and probably even right out of the frame. And then I'm going to try to sort of cover up that center line because you wouldn't really see a center line. I think I'm just going to stick with one little tree right there. I think if I had two, it would be too much. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some dimensions to all of these um, trees. And the way you do that is you add shadows and you add light. So we want to always determine where is the light in this picture. As I'm looking at this, this seems lighter to me than this. It is. The purples are a little bit lighter. There's, got a, there's a little bit of black. I think I had that on the brush, but I'm going to leave it there because... I think it looks actually pretty good to have that in the sky. So I'm going to clean my brush off. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out slate gray. And I've already got some black on my palette. I'm going to go back to that really tiny, tiny, thin 3.0 brush that I used. And I'm going to start with the black. I'm going to put some black on that birch tree. And one thing you have to remember is that when you're doing a birch tree, the lines, the striations in the bark, uh, the bark are always parallel to the horizon. You don't want just dots because it will look like a Dalmatian if you do that. 
So we're just gonna put some little lines in. We're gonna start with the black. The bottom of the tree where the birch grows is always got thicker lines in it. So we're gonna make them a little bit thicker down here. Again, really, really light. Gonna keep more on the left side than the right because that's where the shadow is. And we're just gonna sort of work our way up. And put one every now and then. definition there we go all right so now to lighten all of this up I'm gonna to go to my snow cap and we're gonna start putting our whites in do a tiny little touch up that has been bugging me you see right here there's a little bit of a blurb I'm just gonna take this little brush and then just take my finger and just sort of try to work that out and then I'll take a dry brush Alright, so now we're going to go through with snow cap white. There's a messy bottle of it. It's gonna look, oh, right here. There's a clean bottle so you can see what it's supposed to look like. And this has got a little ball in it. You can hear it in this one. This one's pretty dry. There we go. I'm going to use this one up first and I probably will have to go to the other one. Put it in my palette. I'm going to go to this little tiny flat brush. Just make sure there's no ink on it. And I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go through. And on the lighter side, I'm just going to put some white. All right, so now I want to put in those white branches. So I want to make sure I have an absolutely clean brush. I'll put a little bit more snow cap in. I'm going to go through and just sort of touch up these branches. All right, so now we're gonna add some dimensionality to this tree. And again, remember, light's coming from here. So you're just gonna use your white. You can already see it's gonna start to pop. And I usually put it on the tops of the branches and on the side of the tree that the light's coming from. Because that's where the light hits. It hits on the tops of the branches and it hits on the side of the tree where the light is coming from. All right, so now the last thing to do is to add a little dimension to the tree over here. And these are cool because they have a lot of snow on them. Usually they really like suck the snow into their needles. So we're gonna add a fair amount of snow cap to these. 
And again, I like using a wider flat brush to do this to get that effect. So we're going to start with the side that has the light coming to it and we're just simply going to pull down like this. And again, with alcohol inks, they love to repel each other. I don't know if you could see, but the inks really don't want to turn white. They just want to blend into a beautiful gray, which is fine. So we're going to go both sides. Again, try to get rid of that center line. You don't really want the center line there. They're really, we want to get the illusion of it being sort of rounded. So we're going to do one more pass, or I should say not one more, but another pass. And this time I'm sort of dabbing the white onto it. Alright, well there you have it. There are trees, uh, three different ways, your pine tree, your hardwood tree in the winter time like a maple, and then your birch tree. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Thank you.